the Leo Alves podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Leo Alves podcast. Welcome back. And in this podcast episode, I'm going to approach it somewhat differently to the way I've been doing podcast episodes in more recent times, just because I feel like this would of I, I feel like this does make a good podcast episode where it's me just more thinking out loud and like I, I don't want to say really telling a story because I don't feel like it is me telling a story, but it is more sharing recent events that have been happening. Um don't worry, it's like nothing bad or anything. I'm just like basically it's about my language learning journey and how it can apply very much to your fitness journey because again I do feel like as I've been learning Japanese over the last few years there are a lot of um, similarities and takeaways that have number that number one can be very applicable to a fitness journey and number two have definitely made me a better one-to-one online fitness coach Um, and in this podcast episode I'm gonna kind of speak about that so just to get stuck straight into the topic as to why I'm here I I recently broke my 1800 day streak and it was one of the best decisions I could have made and what I mean by that is I started using Duolingo at the end of 2019 when I secured a visa to move to Japan at the time, I knew zero Japanese, so the small bits I was learning on the app felt like big wins. I also supplemented my learning with like Japanese textbooks and YouTube videos. But Duolingo quickly became my like go-to daily habit. The app's gamification made it easy to stick with, and on busy days, it provided a very low barrier way to stay consistent with my language goals. And, you know, just me bringing this up reminds me of a concept I often share with my one-to-one online fitness members, which is the fact that I encourage them to set two types of goals. High motivation day goals, which is like ambitious targets for days you're feeling more motivated, like you're really ready to go and really just do like the most, like, I don't know, hitting 12,000 steps, completing an hour long workout, eating 26 grams of fiber, whatever it might be, getting 150 grams of protein, 160, whatever your goal is. And then on the other hand, low motivation day goals where these are easier tasks you can check off even on your like worst day where you don't feel like doing anything which could be like a 10 minute walk a set of pull-ups or even drinking a large glass of water as soon as you wake up and in my language learning journey an example of a high motivation goal was an hour-long exchange call with my Japanese um, friends in Japan who either wanted to learn English or Portuguese where we do like half an hour of the call in um, Portuguese or English and then the other half in Japanese and then like on my low motivation day goals I was just like okay I'm gonna do like five to ten minutes of Duolingo and this approach worked fantastically at first especially during like the newbie gains phase and what I mean by the newbie gains phase is like so in strength training when you start strength training for the first time you can basically just gain muscle and strength by kind of just doing anything your programming can be really bad but just because you've never done it before and you're going from doing nothing to doing something you can make really rapid improvements I sometimes jokingly say you can look at a barbell and and make progress um so that's what I'm kind of like like comparing it to here where every new letter or phrase at the beginning of my um, language learning journey felt like a massive step forward because I was learning them quite quickly however as time passed I noticed I relied on my low motivation day goals like 90% of the time 10 minutes of Duolingo might have given me the feeling I was doing something whereas in reality it wasn't pushing me to improve anymore my friend Marcel who is fluent in Japanese he warned me that Duolingo was no longer serving me, but I kept using it out of habit and because I, I did genuinely enjoy it. And like in, in that case, it, it's similar to fitness. At the beginning of a fat loss journey, you know, walking 20 minutes daily might yield great results. That's that's the only change you've done. You've only started walking 20 minutes, whereas before you weren't walking at all. And with that, you've seen really good progress. But as you start to progress over time, those walks may no longer be enough to keep you moving forward toward your goals. To continue progressing, you might need something more challenging, like structured workout plans, specific step goals, maybe specific protein targets in the day. In my case, I had high motivation activities like language exchange calls and online lessons with a teacher at italki and if you don't know what italki is it's basically like a language learning pro um, platform in which you can like pay a teacher to teach you the language that they specialize in um, or they're fluent in and you know you get some really good teachers on there everyone's got like ratings and reviews and you know what in this podcast episode in the show notes of this podcast episode i'm not sponsored by the way but they do have a referral code um, in which you can get like i think it's like five dollars off your first call i will just like put that link in the show notes of this podcast episode for full transparency i do get five dollars off as well or something like that but basically just think of 
me sharing this with you because I do think it's worth trying and I really did like italkia. I haven't used it for a while but I do plan to go back. But yeah, in my case I again like I said I had high motivation activities like language exchange calls and online lessons with a teacher at italki which were fantastic but looking back I I realized that in 2023 and 2024 I spent 90% of my time relying on low motivation tasks that were no longer moving the needle for me. I was stuck in a plateau persisting with habits I had completely outgrown. And the frustration of a plateau suddenly hit me hard, like I'd known for a long time that I needed to adjust my approach to continue improving, but now it was time to take my Japanese studies more seriously. Maintaining streaks with current small daily habits wasn't enough. I had to push myself beyond the low barrier habits that had once served me well. So I set new low motivation goals such as completing three pages from a textbook, reading a Japanese textbook, of course, reading a few pages of a Dragon Ball manga that I actually bought back in when I lived in Japan in the, I think it was 2021 when I brought it or 20, I think it was 2021. And I re- when I brought it, I, I tried to read the first few pages and I r- remember just thinking, well, like uh, I'm not at the level where I can read a, a manga in Japanese just yet. So I kept it safe and in good condition and hoping one day I'd go back to it and, I, and I'll be fine. And to be fair, I haven't opened it for a couple of years now. So yeah, I, I do plan to go back to that ASAP. I've been very consistent with um, the pages from a textbook. Um, and then I, I was also thinking of going and starting to watch Japanese reality television, which uh, called Terrace House, actually, and which, you know, I don't like reality TV, and I do think usually it's just rubbish, but uh, my friend, again, Marcel, who is fluent in Japanese, shout out to Marcel, um, and a few other friends have said that, like, watching reality TV in the language that you're trying to learn can be really valuable, because then you hear how, like, just... People speak normally in everyday conversations, in, in just conversations they're having. It's not like these um, awkward conversations that you get in textbooks or in like just in a classroom. You actually get to hear like real life, um, just of the real life conversations of the language that you're trying to learn. And it can be really valuable to watch it, um, to, to watch it in that way. And I do think there is value there. So I'm, I'm open to doing that. Um, and yeah, these tasks, they, they still fit into my daily routine, pushing me a bit further than before. And uh, if you're feeling stuck in your fitness journey, hitting a plateau and relying on the same easy habits that used to work for you but no longer do, I want to say to you as well, it might be time to reassess your fitness goals. Are your daily actions still challenging you or are they just what you're used to? Maybe it's time to consistently hit your protein goals every day. Maybe it's time to start working out three times a week instead of one. Maybe it's time to start eating five bits of fruit and veg a day rather than two. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, there's a a few ways you could look at this. And, you know, to finish off this podcast episode, I don't want to just leave you with anything or I mean with nothing. So what I will say is like, if you want something to help you move the needle, you can grab my free workout plan in the show notes of this podcast episode. It basically outlines like exercises you would do well to do, sets, reps, and of course it will ensure you're on the right path. Each exercise does have a video example for it as well. So you can like really understand how to do the exercise so yeah if you want to grab that free workout plan then the link for that is in the show notes of this podcast episode as well if you want to reach out to me on social media on instagram threads or twitter you can always reach out to me at leo alves pt alves is spelled a l v a l v e s i'm leo alves pt and those those links are also in the show notes of this podcast episode as well but otherwise yeah take care have an amazing rest of your day keep crushing your fitness journey and you know make those adjustments that you feel are necessary because i certainly am on my language learning journey and otherwise have a a great rest of your day take care that wraps it up for another episode of the leo alves podcast i do hope you enjoyed listening to this episode if you did then please do consider sharing it with your friends family group chat or even anyone else Else who you know could be interested in listening to that episode otherwise if you haven't already then please do leave a five-star review on whichever platform you are listening to this on and remember all the relevant links such as the inquiry form to potentially become a Keros online member my social media handles a free fat loss guide and a free workout plan are all also found in the show notes of this podcast episode as well otherwise take care and i'll see you around